Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jin and in today's video, we're going to go over chapter 23 and chapter 24. I put these two chapters together because they're both relatively short chapters. Chapter 23 is on facility design, layout and organization. And chapter 24 is on facility policies, procedures and legal issues. So let's dive right in. Uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out other lectures for chapters 1 through 22, they should be on my CSCS lecture playlist. All right, so first slide here, general aspects of new facility design. So some things to keep in mind here, there's four phases, pre-design phase, design phase, construction phase, and pre-operation phase. Pre-design phase is when we do need analysis and create this master plan to see exactly why we're creating the space, right? So needs analysis, feasibility study, master plan, and hire an architect. Going into the design phase is when we finalize the committee and create a blueprint. Construction phase is following through with the master plan, arranging the equipment, and checking the construction progress. And then pre-operation phase, before the facility or the gym opens, you want to hire the staff, create cleaning schedule, assign duties and create plan for operation when the place opens. Assessing the athletic program needs. So questions like how many athletes will use this facility? What are the training goals? What will the training experience be like for these athletes? And how will the athletes be scheduled? Are some things to keep in mind for operation. Designing strength and conditioning facility. More things to keep in mind, right? When you're designing a strength and conditioning facility, location is super important. You want it to be preferably on the ground floor. Supervision location, where are the supervising staff going to be located? Accessibility to and into and out of the building. Ceiling height for jumping and explosive activities. Flooring, also important. You want rubber floors, antifungal carpet. Uh, if you want indoor turf, Got to look into that and then wood for lifting. Environmental factors like lighting, comfortable training temperature, humidity. Um, you want that to be monitored in circulation. You want that to be good as well. Electrical services and mirrors can be a great coaching tool. Oh. So you want it to be at least six inches away from the equipment and 20 inches above the floor for safety purposes. All right, moving on to the next slide, like I said, these are very short chapters, so I'm going to breeze past it. If you have any questions, though, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, equipment placement, machines, ideally you want it to be in the middle, free weights and racks along the wall. Cardio machines, you want it to be in its own section, and then bar barbells and dumbbells, minimum of 36 inches of space between others. Traffic flow, things to keep in mind, stretching and warm-up area, circuit training area, free weights, weightlifting, and aerobic area, and then maintenance and cleaning. So walls and ceiling cleaned, you want it to be cleaned at least uh, once every week or two. Wood weightlifting platform checked for splintering for safety purposes, and then uh, equipment that are hanging from the ceiling, you want that to be regularly checked. Mission statement for your facility and program goals. So policies are facility rules and regulations. And then there's procedures. And that's how policies are carried out. Litigation are guidelines for supervision and instruction. And then you have the mission statement, why you have this space. And then program goals is desired end products. Legal and ethical issues, informed consent is something you want to take into consideration for your clients and your athletes before they start using their using your facility. Liability is a legal responsibility. Standard of care is reasonable expectations. Negligence is failure to act as a reasonable person and to neglect the situation. Assumption of risk is knowing that an inherent risk exists because risks always exist. All right, uh, discipline. There is first to fifth offense. First offense is verbal warning by staff, importance of the rule and explanation of the nature is executed after the warning. 
Second offense is dismissal from the facility for one day. Third offense for one week, you're dismissed for one week. Fourth offense, you're dismissed for an entire year. And then fifth, fifth offense, you're permanently dismissed from the facility. And then more on policy and procedures. This is the last slide here. Supplements and banned substances, strength and conditioning, uh, professionals, sorry, there's a typo here, professionals or staff must not prescribe or recommend drugs or controlled substances. Facility administration, consider what workout format will affect the greatest number of athletes with scheduling. Oftentimes, that's an issue for big high school programs or um, even college athletics because there's a good amount of student athletes using the facility, so you want to take that into consideration. In-season teams have priorities over off-season teams usually. For emergency planning and response, the EMS procedures, um, things to look into, emergency personnel, emergency communication, emergency equipment, what are you going to do and how you're going to respond during emergency situations, roles within the emergency team, um, trying to provide the immediate care and giving them the immediate attention, emergency equipment retrieval, activation of EMS, individual making the call, should be familiar with facility location because they want to be able to direct um, the EMS personnel coming to your facility um, well. So, all right, so that is it for today. Um, like I said, they're both very short chapters. I hope you guys find this helpful and I'll see you guys uh, in my other videos. Thank you.